So I've had some more time messing around with servers and I thought it'd be a good time to make a updated video on GPU power and the servers I've worked with. And we'll mostly be focusing on the servers here in the foreground. Stuff in the background, that's other projects. I wanted to cover the 12th gen Dells, but when I was checking pin out just to verify it was the same, I ran into a weird issue that I don't really understand at this point. So I need to take some more time playing with those to understand what I'm up against. I don't believe the 12th gen Dell video cable or power cables I'm making are interchangeable with the 13th gen though, from what I'm seeing. So that'll probably be a topic for a future video. So the first server, move a little closer here, that I have. This is the Cisco UCS C240 M3. And in my current config, I have dual E5 2650 V2 Xeons in this along with dual 650 watt power supplies. Now the manual says that you're supposed to use dual 1200 watt power supplies with this, but I found out like with a lot of these manuals, that's not the case. Those are just validated configs because with this one, I was able to run a single AMD uh, RX 580 4 gig card in this. These do have the capability of running dual GPUs. So you can put one in this riser and one in that riser. Although that really eats into your expandability then. And the manual doesn't specify. There we go. This power connector right here, which is kind of hard to see because it's in the shade. If we give a little light, yeah, it's slightly better. But according to the manual, there's a cable that you can get from Cisco that will allow you to run dual Tesla K40s or dual grid K2s. And I pull my notes. <laughs> The Tesla K40 has a 245 watt rated TDP and the Grid K2 has a 225 watt TDP. And generally speaking, PCI Express X16 slots can provide up to 75 watts of power. So in theory, this single port here is capable of putting out 300 watts. I don't have the right power supplies to even think about testing that config, even though it might let me do that. Also, since I cannot remote manage this due to its annoying flash requirements, <laughs> that's another reason why I'm not going to push this, because I just I have no way to know what the server is doing. And the pinouts are going to be the same on all these servers. So let's see, we'll orient this correctly. So this, looking top top down on this, this would be the pin out of that four pin connector on the motherboard. So you have your two grounds on the side, three, three more on the bottom, and then the top three from left to right are your plus 12 volt. And from my experience, at least so far, basically the same cables I use in my R720 are compatible with that port. One thing I haven't tried with this is passively cooled cards. Since I don't have any to spare, I could always yank a Tesla M40 out of my um, R720, but I try not to shut that down too much since I actually do use the server, not necessarily so much the cards. I have a feeling that there's some cooling considerations that will have to be made if you were to run a passive card, because when I was running the RX 580 
in this, which has uh, side fans, not blower fans. It had some heat issues and it was running pretty hot. If, if a person can control the fans in this, you'd probably want to definitely crank them up if you're going to put GPUs in this. Alternatively, you might be able to get away with a blower style video card. I just don't have any right now I could test. I'm kind of keeping my eyes out for a 1080 Ti Founders Edition, but they're just still too expensive for something I'm not going to use when I already have a 1070 I don't use. <laughs> All right, so next we have the PowerEdge SC... I'm sorry, not PowerEdge. Dell Compellent SC8000 and the PowerEdge R720. Basically, both of these servers are the same thing. The Compellent SC8000 just doesn't have some of the bells and whistles, basically, that the R720 has. So I'm going to pull the covers off of these. So as you can tell, they're visually the same. I guess with this camera angle, you can't see the model numbers, but, you know, just have to take my word for it with, that these are what, are, what I'm calling them. Um... The compellents, as you'll be able to see, is missing its RAID controller. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And it also doesn't have front drive support, and that's basically the majority of the difference between these two. The Dell documentation says that you're supposed to run these with 1100 watt power supplies if you want to run GPUs. But in other videos and with conversations with people in those videos, have I've proven that that's not the case. I have tested these with 750 watt power supplies and run GPUs. I don't believe you'd want to go much lower than that, considering most of the CPUs these come with are minimum 95 watt TDP. And each riser can run either one or two GPUs with basically 225 watts of power out of the GPU power connector on the riser. And that power connector, whoops, basically is wired the same, so it's kind of oriented the same way if you're, you're facing it. So this is basically just a PCI Express pinout. And I guess I didn't hit on that with the Cisco, but if you're running a Tesla card, and I believe some of the grid cards as well might require it, but you got to make sure that if you're running certain cards for the Tesla and grid series that you're powering them with EPS 12 volt. So you'll have to convert the pin out because this would be the cable pin out. And basically, yeah, so if that, that were to plug into there, it's basically inverted, plus there's a ground pin in the wrong spot. Or wait, sorry. <laughs> yeah, ground pin, this one, that is in the wrong spot. With, with these, especially I found with my Tesla M40s, for whatever reason, there's not the ability for the card to communicate its temperatures with the server. I think that part kind of falls back on the fact that it's technically not a supported card. So if, if you're running a passively cooled card that isn't officially supported, then the fans might not ramp accordingly. So you may have to manually set fan speed. Generally, I've found with my Tesla M40s, the just default fan speed that these run on has been fine unless I'm like really pushing it. Um, like for example, if I'm mining or doing something extremely GPU intensive, it will push those cards pretty hot. Fortunately, especially with like the Tesla M40, they're designed to run 
at what I would consider to be pretty aggressively high temperatures. They, but they're, they're supposedly ready to handle it. So I kind of, I guess with myself personally, I like to keep stuff at 65 for the GPUs if I can help it. Generally with video cards that are side cooled, like the EVGA 1070 I have, they will run a little bit hotter in these enclosures that I'd like to see. I have found with these, since they get pretty good airflow compared to the Cisco one, that you can just simply increase the fan speed a little bit. You don't have to ramp up the case fans. It is better if you're willing to put up with the noise. In my case, I'm I'm just a ear's length away from my, my server room, so um, I'm just running stock fan speeds. But overall, the R720 platform has been great with GPUs from my experience. I haven't run it into any issues really. I would say though, if you are gonna run a GPU in these, I, I would say try to go with the blower style if you can. But if you really wanna make sure the thermals stay low, you can just ramp up the, the case fans and that'll be pretty straightforward. Um, I haven't tried pushing the CPU TDP limitations that Dell recommends based on the fact that these servers won't stop you from doing an unsupported GPU config. I'm guessing that the CPU TDP limitations they recommend are purely just the fact that they didn't bother testing anything higher than that. I would say that there's nothing stopping you from exceeding what they recommend. I believe that's one of the thing, things I didn't put on my notes, unfortunately, but um, I believe the TDP they recommended was no more than 135 watts. But I don't see any indications on why that would matter. And I would say if you're willing to take a gamble, there can't be that big a risk because my assumption was initially before I knew better is that the life cycle controller in these would stop you from doing, you know, unsupported configs. But yeah, my experience has proven otherwise. And these have been fantastic for GPUs with the amount of GPU work I've done with them. All right, well, this will be the last server I do in this video, and this is the PowerEdge T420. I could not find in Dell documentation any specified power output limitations regarding GPU support. So I'm not quite sure how far you can push this. They still are recommending the 1100 watt power supplies. So I'm assuming that the two GPU power outputs, you got the one on the power supply backplane, and you got one on the board connects, connected to the power supply backplane. I'm guessing those are gonna be capable of a similar level of power as the R720, so around 225 watts. This does have dual GPU support. Um, I would say due to the bad cooling design of this particular server, I would avoid running two GPUs in there if they're not blower style because the only cooling this system has is this single fan here. So unless you're willing to modify the case, I would be afraid to run like two of these EVGA 1070s because even as it was, I had to increase the fan speeds just to ensure this thing didn't get cooked. It was holding stable around 65 before I increased the fan speeds, but I wasn't too happy with that. So I used afterburner with the dock, the dock, stock, <laughs> the stock fan curves, which I believe at, at 50C, it was taking the fan speed up to 40%. And it was staying pretty stable then, even under load. As for any other limitations, I don't know. The documentation does say if you're running 
GPUs, you're not going to be able to use the bottom two five and a quarter inch drive bays, but I don't understand where that's coming from because even if you had a longer GPU, it's probably not going to go beyond the length of the motherboard. I can't even think of any good examples because I believe the 1070 and like the Tesla M40s are pretty close to each other in length. I haven't tested it yet and I probably won't bother testing it, but based on how everything in here works and worked out from my testing, I would be fairly confident to say that if you were to put the 750 watt power supplies in this instead of the 1100 watt, you shouldn't have any problems running GPUs. I would definitely think twice about doing passive GPUs like the Tesla cards, whether it be an M40 or a K80 or whatnot. Because then you might have to worry about space limitations. I don't know for sure if some of these cables would maybe get in the way or if there's enough volume around this space for a custom 3D printed lower mount for cooling a Tesla card. If you were to run a Tesla card, you definitely wouldn't be able to use these two five and a quarter inch expansion slots anymore because the fan would more than likely intrude into those, those bays. I don't see why you couldn't run them though. I'm, I'm sure it'd work just fine. It's just cooling is going to be your biggest caveat. And like I said, cooling in this in general is really disappointing. These, it's kind of confusing because they gave these computers or servers, that is, um, they gave these T420 servers the ability to run GPUs, but that's your only fan. I mean, you could say, oh yeah, there's fans in those power supplies, but those power supply fans are so restricted and the power supplies on their own are, you know, having to cool their own stuff. So I, I don't really know what this good solution for that would be. If, if you wanted to, you probably could get away with running a single high TDP GPU and then use spare expansion slots for a PCI slot mounted exhaust fan. But Overall, with the T420, it's a fantastic platform, and this build turned out really fantastic. I mean, I was really happy with it, but I definitely would be careful with pushing it because the cooling is definitely not going to be adequate. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that kind of gets everything in one video. I really wanted to cover some of the 13th gen uh, servers I have, but unfortunately, uh, the, the pin out on those is, is weird. Uh, one of the sense pins for some reason has negative 3.3 volts coming out of it. And I don't know why. So I have to do more research on that. Also, I haven't gotten my hands on a T620. So I don't know how that works and I haven't looked into it yet since I really haven't had time, but I would suspect that what applies for the T420 would also apply for the T620. And the T320, I haven't had a chance to look at. I did just get one of those in recently, so I might see what that can do, but I don't imagine it's gonna have GPU support just because that's, it's not their bottom tier, but it's basically their bottom tier. I don't know if, there's a R220 or not. I'm sure there is based on Dell's history, but the 320 series servers are basically as low end as you want to go before you basically stop being a server in my opinion. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if there's any questions, let me know. I'm slowly becoming a subject matter expert in this. There isn't much I haven't tried yet other than putting, I could put the, I forget what the next tier down from 750 is. I think a 495 watt. I haven't tried messing with the 495 watt power supplies in these with GPUs. They would probably work, 
but you definitely wouldn't be able to have them in redundant mode then. So that'd be the biggest thing. You might be able to push your luck, but when I had this running, the peak power draw was 400 watts. And I have a feeling you're going to start getting to the point where your life cycle controller actually will start giving you grief and potentially might even shut the system down. But yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will try my best to answer them as I have been messing with these for quite a bit now. But thanks for watching.